study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com uh, but ezzy i see your hand yeah i was just gonna say i kind of agree with that last one because i mean he was able to dwell with him and see him physically without passing away. Whereas when we dwell with him, you know, it, in heaven, it'll be after judgment uh, where he was able to baptize him, touch him, see him without dying. Cause even in, in the old Testament in Exodus, it says that no one has seen me without dying or without perishing. So, I mean, there literally isn't when you, when you think about it, other than Abraham, Moses and, and John and those that were living during that time when Messiah was walking the earth, you really don't hear about anyone else being in his presence that way and, and, and living to, to talk about it. So mm. that yeah. was my take. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just giving it a shot. That's the best I can, I can do. It's reading on the surface level. Cause other than that, this passage don't make sense to me. Like what would make me greater than the man who's chosen to prepare the way of Yahuwah? Like, how am I greater? How, uh, you know, and I'm not claiming that I, I am greater. OK, uh, but according to this passage. I qualify to be greater because all you have to do is qualify to be the least in the kingdom of heaven to be better than to be greater than John the Baptist. So those of us saved today who even who even are least in the kingdom are greater. So technically you and I, as you derail you are in some way greater than John the Baptist because you believe by faith without seeing. Um, that's the best I can do. But we're not greater than John in the sense of our purpose. John had a greater purpose. I think John had a greater purpose, man. He was the one chosen to prepare the way. Um, what else do we have here? It says verse 12. And it says, and from the days of John, the baptized, the Baptist or the immerser, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Okay. I've seen, I've heard this verse used in so many, I've seen Christians using this and praise and worship songs. They're like the kingdom suffer violent, but the violent take it by force. We got to take the kingdom by force. And I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's what it's talking about. Um, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence is not a good thing, right? It's not a good thing. People are fighting. There is a spiritual wicked force that is fighting against the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is where the good guys are, right? The kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of Babylon, the kingdom of the anti-Messiah, these are, these are the bad guys, right? So it says the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence. How is it suffering violence? Well, first of all, what is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven, the king of the kingdom of heaven is an Israelite. The Messiah is the king of the kingdom of heaven. And I believe that the kingdom was, is, and always will be Israel. In the book of Revelation, even talks about the new Jerusalem will come out of heaven. Jerusalem exists in Israel. <laughs> So the kingdom is Israel. That's the first thing we want to get across is when you're reading the New Testament, get in your mind that the assembly, the congregation, who Christians call church, the assembly, the congregation is Israel. There is no replacement of Israel. There is no nation. There is no doing away with the title Israel. There's no doing away with the name Israel. It remains and persists to be Israel. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is Israel. Israel. That's first and foremost. So the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. What does that mean? There's a lot of sin in the camp. There's a lot of attack from the enemy coming against God's kingdom. In the times of Messiah, you have a lot of false teachers, false prophets, Pharisees, Sadducees. The majority of the rulers of that day 
were teaching doctrines and traditions of men. They were wolves, vipers, devouring the Israelite brothers and sisters. So the kingdom is suffering violence, and the violent take it by force. They're not asking for permission. They're not being polite about it. They're coming and aggressively teaching false doctrine. Okay? We can go into other aspects of that. There's demonic oppression, all types of stuff. Okay? The kingdom is suffering violence. And it says, for all the prophets. Um, so anyway, a quick summary, verse 12. And from the days of John until now, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. A lot of people think that prophecy stopped after John, but that can't be further from the truth. It only takes one verse to disprove this. If you read the book of Acts, there are prophets and prophetess, also female prophets, who are prophesying. So that's not, it's not saying prophecy ends or stops, okay? And it's not saying that the prophets and the law are done away with, because again, there wouldn't be prophets again. Uh, yesterday we spoke about, um, uh, what did we say about the law? Uh, Yahusha getting baptized by John the Baptist, right? He says that I must be baptized by you so that we can fulfill all righteousness, so that righteousness may be fulfilled by us. You need to baptize me, John. So John had to baptize Yahusha to fulfill all righteousness. Fulfill is the same word that's used in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, pleru, where Yahushua says, I did not come to destroy the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill. Fulfill must not mean to do away with, because if he does, if pleru means to do away with something, then Yahushua and John are doing away with righteousness, because that's why Yahushua was going to be immersed. One of the reasons is because he had, he had to fulfill all righteousness. He had to check off the list of the dues to be declared righteous and do what is right according to the law. Being immersed and cleansed and washed was one of the things he needed to do. And he did it. So he's not doing away with it because the people would stop baptizing. If that was the case, there would be no more water baptism after Yahushua and John. And he wanted to tell his disciples to baptize. Exactly. So that's so 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 fulfilling doesn't mean doing away with anything, right? So, but here, I come back to this point, it says, for, for the prophets and the law prophesied until John. This must be talking about, I'm just giving it a shot of what it could be, if it's not talking about doing away with the law and the prophets, what is it talking about? It has to be talking about the coming of the Messiah, the first coming, being born of a woman, Emmanuel, God with us. There's nothing more to prophesy about than what the law and the prophets already prophesied about his first coming. There are still some prophecies that have yet to be fulfilled regarding his second coming. So it can't be saying that there's nothing more to, to, to be fulfilled from the law and the prophets after John. There's, there's a lot of more things that need to be fulfilled. Israel needs to be physically restored. The Messiah needs to come back and rule and reign on a throne of David in the real legit land of Israel, the real legit Jerusalem. He needs to restore the kingdom of Israel, the tribes of Israel, the people of Israel, and all the Gentiles that join. He needs to restore the Levites to their priesthood. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Thank you.